Deborah, with her 30 years of being an entrepreneur and creating over seven companies, knows exactly what it means to accept the mission. When you make that decision, when you accept the mission to become a solopreneur, to take yourself and your talents to market, then you embrace a life of not only unlimited possibilities, but also the unknown. It's an elixir of fear and bravery that only someone who's taken the leap really understands. On our show, Deb digs deep with her guests to highlight what you, the listener, wants to know. The stories, the whys, and the hows to navigate the journey to success. Get ready to hear from some of the most incredible mission takers from Generation Z to Boomers. So sit up, perk up, and get ready to be blown away. Now here is your host, Deborah Drummond. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. Mission accepted. You've not been with us before. I am sure. Like, you're like, mission accepted. What does that mean? Ooh, this is going to be good. (laughs) I bet you if you decided to watch the Mission Accepted podcast, you've got a mission inside you that's probably brimming to happen, either personally or professionally. I have to say, and you know, I'm going to kind of keep it low a little bit because I've got some incredible people that do podcasts and have their own podcasts. But you guys know that I think you are the best audience because you engage and you tell me your stories and you share what our speakers are sharing and you're just you're in like it's like you've taken the mission with me which is why i love showing up here every week so not only are you guys the best audience today but you are the most resilient you have overcome things you have jumped through hoops you have you know taken that ball and thrown it in for a touchdown on many occasions but you know what sometimes resilience can get tough Sometimes resilience can get like, I don't know if I got it, you know, I don't know if I got it. And because I have a show about missions and people that take mission, and we talk a lot about why we stay on that mission. And sometimes it's all about courage, bravery, like pulling it in. But wouldn't it be nice if you had someone that was doing the marathon with you? Like you guys know, I'm a huge advocate about having coach, trainers, experts, you know, spiritual people in your life, personal development people in your life, whoever it is, but I love having someone run with me, right? You guys know this run I'm doing, or let's just say walk I'm doing across Ireland. And you know what? I suckered someone in to do it with me because it's so much more fun. And when you feel like slowing down, they, they keep you to pace, right? Resilience is tough at times, at different times in your life. So guess what? guess what? You guys are going to get even more resilient. You're going to learn things about resilience because lucky me, I found someone to do some running with and I got to listen and talk with Saskia. Sas- and I love her last name, Saskia Christian. And she is going to talk about being resilient. Isn't that kind of like, isn't that kind of like, doesn't that kind of work? Doesn't that kind of work? Um, so I'm going to stop introducing and stop leading in I think I let the cat out of the bag about what people are going to learn about today. So Saskia, welcome to the Mission Accepted show. Thank you so much, Deborah. It's such a pleasure being here. Thank you for having me on this amazing platform. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) All about the missions. Yes. Well, we're all soulpreneur and sisterhooded up here because we both believe in resilience and, you know, being courageous and bravery and top performance and that kind of thing and doing it together. So look, you are an incredible, you know, you're known as a resilience master. You are a very powerful life transformation coach. Um, you have vast experience from different arenas on different platforms, authoring and et cetera. But what, what's your story? You know, I, you, you're going to help us with our stories, but what's your story? Did you just wake up one day and go, oh, mm, resilience coach. Mm-mm, don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, brought a great, you, what brought you to us? That's a great question. So that's a powerful why I do have. It, it resonated on in my personal journey as well as my professional journey. Pretty powerful. And I, it would go as far as um, back in high school where I did not pass like a major exam. Everybody is just really looking for teenagers to excel in this exam because it really determined the trajectory right in their life. And so I did not pass my subjects. And so I actually had an amazing opportunity for a comeback with a a wonderful uh, mother, wonderful uh, home environment. And I got a a whole new school environment to help me those strategies, those test making strategies so I can excel. And that's when I realized 
the importance of cultivating resilience in one's journey. And my book, On Purpose, the book chapter that I wrote in On Purpose, Tragedies for Living and Leading, I did reference that example. But there are so many more. I actually had the opportunity to live in four different countries, including the United States. And I can't tell you what a powerful example of resilience that was. Not only did I uh, you know, cultivate resilience for to do exceptional things, gain scholarships, just meet and connect with amazing people and develop myself in such a phenomenal way. But I also gained cultural competency out of it because relatability, empathy, and resilience will take you places. So I'm the resilience strategist. Also, even my corporate career of close to 20, 20 years, I served there as a resilience ambassador for the company. And I said, okay, well, I need to be able to have a greater outreach so I can improve the lives of so many, give them the tools that they need to overcome those setbacks, work through those difficult, navigate through those difficult challenges and have long lasting thriving and empowerment, the greatest gift. So that's when I started Boost True. Boost True allowed me, the birth of a Boost True allowed me to be able to do that Resiliency is a gift. You need to know what resilience says, how grace and resilience work beautifully together. And that's the IP I created, I design with professionals in mind, whether you're a corporate executive, business professional leader, everybody wants to know how they can deliver a great comeback in their life, how they can inspire others. Because everybody experiences setback and challenges. But the thing is, the differentiator is, how do you overcome that? How do you stand out? How do you make an impact? How do you inspire others? And that's what I'm here to do because that's the power that I have. That's my superpower. That's your superpower. We talk about that, you know, recognizing your why, recognizing your superpower, mm -hmm. doubling down. It reminds me of when my daughter, when she was young, she was in grade three and she was having some challenges, right? She was showing up with some learning differences. Um, and assimilating information differently. And I went to a colleague of mine and he gave me the best advice that carried me through both children. And he was like, everyone right now is going to be focusing on the problem. Teachers are going to be focusing on the problem. Tutors are going to be focusing on the problem. Find her gift and double down. And it has been a powerful strategy. Um, enough that my son 19 now is launching his own company. But as people listen to you speak, you talked about supporting corporate and then you have now branched out and you're supporting many. So even for someone like yourself who studies resilience, so obviously for you, you've got some things down pat, but for those listeners out there, because we have lots of them that are either entrepreneurs and they're kind of like, they're at the end of the, like, they're like, is it going to happen? Is it going to this? Or people that have, are considering venturing into entrepreneurship or even the other way around entrepreneurship back into back into something stable. What is just some of the ideas if someone is at a place where they're really, they, they are being as resilient as they can, what would you say to them? That's a very, very, um, very good question that you raised. I would say, first of all, um, to dial in on resilience in particularly in those moments of transition in our lives and we all go through them. We have to give each other, first of all, grace. Right, But understanding and giving grace that there needs to be a self-awareness that needs to be cultivated. right? So we need to, of course, heal right, in order to really um, grow in that self-awareness and build that self-confidence and leverage our support system. right? Because that's the social resilience is a very important component in building overall resilience. So you leverage all those positive factors, but most importantly, improving yourself, giving yourself grace to just adapt to the change because that's what it's about. It's not a new, it's not a, the old normal. It's a new normal that you have to thrive in. And that requires grace. And that's exactly what my, you know, uh, package or my portfolios are really about. Just uh, helping, you know, uh, leverage res grace and resilience so that people can at any moment or any season of their life, I talk about the seasons as in winter, summer, spring, right? Whether you're in transition or not, we all go through those seasons of life. But applying those grace and resilience 
principles to those seasons so that people can move from succumbing to thriving, but not only thriving, long lasting, hopeful thriving and restoration again in their journey. So what I'm hearing is one of the answers would be grace, having grace yes. with yourself, understanding that you're going through transformation, um, supporting yourself in community. Is that what you're, you're sharing? Yes, supporting yourself in community. And of course, uh, with resiliency requires an action plan, right? You have to be strategic. So know your, you know, objectives, really be clear on that. And just as you execute or exercise grace, be intentional in terms of achieving those objectives because you, at the end of it at the end of it all at the end of the journey you want to be able to achieve purpose right and the purpose needs to be impactful and it's not just about yourself of course yes you need to be nurtured and become the best self for everyone around you but it's also about how you should ask yourself how can i empower how i can improve the uh, experience of others. How do I show up after going through such setbacks and challenges? Am I really a better person every day? And all those things that I'm telling you, all those parts of the process is really what I do offer uh, professionals, uh, whether they're in corporate or entrepreneurs or even the spiritual um, base as well. Um, that's what I teach them to, those nuggets and those solutions so that they can enjoy this, but have it long lasting effect. Right. I know that we talked lots and I know that a word, a key word for you is empowering, that you love to empower. When we talk, you, you, you share with me how much you love to empower in your words and in your writings and whatever is about empowering. And where do you think that comes in for somebody? Like at what point does, you just finished talking about kind of like a little bit at the end game, make sure what you're doing is impactful. But yeah. as someone who is a life transformation coach, you must see people through different stages. Some of them not so groovy, you know, the people's stuff comes up as we know. Yes. What is your philosophy around empowering? How do people tap into that? So at what point do they start to, to grasp that, particularly if they're in that trauma yeah. life transformation piece? Absolutely. And empowerment is a key. It's a key, I would just say a probably strategy, but it's very important to me. And it's important that we deal with that or we address that from a mindset level. And that's exactly what I did in the On Purpose Strategies for Living and Leading book, where I talk about turning the tables from victim to undercover victor. And that means that we as professionals, regardless of whichever hemisphere we're in, we do have a unique talent set that we can offer the community, that unique potency that no one else has. And we just need to have that right mindset. And I, I did uh, propose a formula for actually uh, making that mindset transition through resilience, through confidence, and through strategy. And moving to Victor and being able to go through that full transformation so that you can have excellence, success that you've been dreaming of, and walk in passion and purpose fulfilled living. And I do have to say, empowerment for me, um, one of the, the main uh, motivation uh, factors for me actually going into Boost True is really how I can empower executives and specifically female executive leaders mm -hmm. who may be struggling with their influential power and walking in authenticity, like having that servant and authentic authentic leadership. And of course, please understand there are men out there who are also men, uh, male leaders who are also um, needing that type of uh, guidance and growth. And so I provide that solution kit to help them to elevate so that they can maximize and really fulfill their maximum potential and have the best experience, have excellence in their professional journey, and not only that, inspire all those around them so that they can also be exceptional. And then you'll have that wonderful environment of creativity, innovation, and productivity. And that's what everybody is looking, looking to have. So empowerment is a very, very important knob in one's journey. But of course, it goes hand in hand because you have to heal. And that's where my trauma-informed coaching 
comes into play as well. Almost everybody suffer from some type of type of trauma I've suffered in the past. And I do create that tailored experience, um, that tailored plan I have for any particular leader so that they can, they can have that self-leadership, that personal development, have that healing, and then walk in thriving and, you know, and live empowered lives. You um, bring up a good, when you're, when you're talking about, I could almost visualize, you know, when you're talking about working with women in corporate yes. that are in leadership roles that are within confines that may not be theirs and how do they feel empowered and how do they step into authenticity when maybe some of the structure is not necessarily a structure that they would, you know, formulate, but they've got to work with that. I would imagine that's a little tough. Yes, it is. It is very challenging. And I've seen in my 17 plus year in, in high tech sector, right? I've had the opportunity to cross paths with many, many leaders of different, you know, levels or career ladders of you know, success. Mm-hmm. And what I've seen um, work beautifully is um, when and you get the best results when a leader shows up um, with transparency, being authentic, and really fostering that empathetic, supportive culture around them. And that makes it so much easier for them to win, um, get commitment from their team members and get easy buy-in because there's the trust factor and there's the competency factor. And again, the servant leadership, I created 10 C's for mastering servant leadership with particularly female executives in mind. And that addresses the whole knob of, of, of contrast. That's one of the C's mm-hmm. that helps people to value uh, perspectives, not only you know, be confident in the perspective that you show up with, but also value the perspectives around you. And I can't tell you how powerful that is in terms of turning the knob in your favor for influential power. It's so important. It's a critical component of servant leadership. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is there um, an experience that you've had yourself that you can share, whether it's, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be on a grand scheme, but you've obviously, you talked about, you know, I think when you talked about not passing a test, we all went, oh yeah. Yeah. You know, I was the last person picked in baseball or I didn't quite make the, the team or I didn't quite make the grade or I didn't, you know, I got, over you know someone else got picked over me in terms of a position in the so um how did you anything like that like personally where you've had to pull upon your own resilience whether it's that situation or something last week because sometimes it's the little stuff right I mean Saskia it can be like the littlest thing can trigger something off or you're not in you're in a really stressful time in your business or what have you and then that the one little the one little thing so from an everyday standpoint or something that you've gone through, is there something you can share that is relatable to the audience? Yes, yes, yes. And I can definitely say in my own personal life, um, my own health journey as well, I've had to overcome challenges. And I was able to, from those challenges, have a reset. Of course, it was painful. Change is always uncomfortable, always. But when you see the beautiful results that emerge, it's just it's just wow, just wow. And that's what I had. Um, I, I benefited from that. I did the work and I said, okay, well, this is my health challenge and I need to overcome that because it was taking a real toll on my life. And so I actually lost like 40, close to 40 pounds mm-hmm. coming out of that journey, you know, of illness and, you know, having surgeries and so forth. So that was the greatest test of resilience recently that I had to endure. And I'm so glad I had it because I can tell someone that yes, it is doable. It is possible because I've seen it work myself and everything that I do, how I show up, it's really because I have deep convictions about it and the success because I've seen it myself. Either I've seen it in myself or I've seen it work powerfully in the lives of others. Another beautiful example in being a, a leader 
in, in corporate America. So they actually had the opportunity to lead a, a technical team to manufacturing quality excellence just before leaving um, my corporate uh, season. And the the feedback, because feedback is important, right? That's really yes. what tells you what you're doing, if you what are you how are you showing up? <laughs> you have to listen to others. And the feedback was re- really resounding. It's like something is different about you. It's like you're so easy to connect with. And because of that, you get us to do things. And people were saying, oh, I'm working for, <laughs> I'm delivering these results for Saskia. I'm like, no, 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 no. You do not work for me. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, but you understand when you show up with authenticity and you show up like here with care, empathy and compassion for others. And this was a global, you know, um, leadership um, initiative that I had to lead. And so the, the test was really when I got there, it's like, wow, you have remarkable and unique leadership skills. And I said, wow, it must be, re- it must be resilience showing up here beautifully again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and of course that helps with the authentic factor when you're confident in who you are, because you've, you've been through so many things before. Right. I can't tell you so many financial uh, aspects of my, of my, of my academic journey in when it's grad school, undergrad, I had no idea how I was going to start the program or even finish it. Mm -hmm. And resilience showed up again because I have a positive outlook and that is very, very important. And because I was very engaging and, you know, of course, show up, work hard and everything, but have respect for others, no matter where they're from, because you don't know somebody's story. Mm -hmm. And I listened. And because of that, people listened to me. And they said, oh, there is where you can get funding. There is where you can get research assistantship. And that's how I was able to, uh, you know, finish my master's thesis and be able to start a whole wonderful career in the high tech sector as a chemical engineer. So I've seen it work. I've seen it work. And I always love the, the setbacks because I emerged so beautifully <laughs> in the comebacks. Well, when you talk about, you know, working in a leadership and I, and I'm, I'm conscious of the time that we're going to be wrapping up fairly yeah. soon, but when you talk about that leadership, you know, you teaching leaders and, you know, the big thing is when I'm talking to colleagues that are running organizations or what have you, there's like this dance between being authentic, being seen as a leader and the polarity of that. So some of the feedback is difficult to not to be an authentic leader in terms of out there, but an authentic leader on honestly on the inside. It's been interesting conversations. I've been having a lot of them lately. So I'm so glad that you're here. But when you talk to people that have to lead teams or lead corporately or lead organizations or what have you, um, where does that fit in? That must be because they're like, hey, you show up at this as this authentic, resilient leader. And they were so in awe with you and you had all this connection. What do you say to people in those positions? Yes, I, I think it's uh, there is uh, there's still high level possibility for you to show up as a as an authentic leader and still gain the respect of the team members and the people that you serve in your work community. Yeah, ding ding. You don't ding. have to divulge, um, you know, at the workplace. You don't have to divulge personal details or anything of that about your you know, very personal details about your life. But you have to really show, it's important that you show the human component and connect with, it's humans we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Connect genuinely, right? Authentically with others. And when they can feel as though like you do have a heart posture of some form, I'm not saying sympathy, that's a different story, right? When you you have that heart posture of like, they matter, Whatever is going through at, at, at their point, like for instance, somebody may ask an extension on a deadline for a project. I'm a project manager professional, you know. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they'd come up and they were like, okay, whatever. And it's okay, well, what's what's going on? It was like, okay, I have this or whatever, but I'll, I'll do this, but I'll make sure it gets done by tomorrow. And because of my authentic leadership, and I level with them, okay, this is exactly where we are and you know, where I can give grace and so forth. And show up with understanding, right? Understand that it's a person that I'm dealing with. I get remarkable, you know, cooperation from them. 
and the results are just beautiful. So you can be comfortable in who you are. Be confident. I'm very confident in the person who's, who sits before you today. And that's because the different cultural environments have prepared me well to show up with understanding and have that active listening so that I can get really where people are and be able to compromise and meet them halfway. I don't need to divulge all my personal business and details to do that. Yeah. It's interesting, right? It's been a, it's been a big conversation. It's been a lot of circle of leadership conversation because there's been a lot of people coming from corporate going into um, entrepreneurship and there's been this um, relief but where does it, you know, where does that line? So it's been interesting. So I know that we just have a lot. That's just a lot, big part of our audience. I'm going to ask you something completely different. I mean, there's no question that you have this. And I know that you've got some beautiful offers on your website. I'm going to ask you to just bring those up and talk about them in a minute. But I loved when you said deep conviction. I loved that. Like when I think about resilience or courage or bravery or strategy or structure, like from a core level, it's like what gives you that deep conviction, right? There's like, I think there's faith and deep conviction. And I think they have a relationship, but I don't think they're the same thing. And I loved that you said that. So here's something that I, I don't know if you believe this or not, but I'm going to go with it. Um, and I'm going to ask you a question because, you know, you talked about mindset and there's this great story, um, Jack Canfield, and I don't know if you know Jack Canfield, but he was responsible for a lot of the books, Chicken Soup for the everything under the sun, right? Chicken soup for the soul. And so I had a chance to spend some time with him many years ago. And he told me of this uh, story of how he really believed putting all his dreams and aspirations on a list in his office for everyone to see. And many times we don't do that, right? We keep them in a treasure map or in a book or whatever it is. And, and so he said, I really, I put it there. And the story was that he wanted to fly he wanted to learn how to fly this very special jet. And there was only two of them in the world. It was a fighter jet. Mm -hmm. And so the chances of him being able to fly that jet was pretty slim. But one day, this gentleman walked into his office to have a meeting with him for nothing to do with flying. And he happened to see his list. And on his list was this jet to be able to learn how to fly this jet. Mm -hmm. And this person was one of two people only in the world that knew how to fly that jet and said, if you want to fly that jet, I'll take you. Wow. So my question to you, my dear friend, who goes and helps and motivates people and helps them inspire, and you are pouring out to people, not necessarily on your business list, but on your I would love to list. Let's put something out there in the world for you. Let's give back to you. So if you could say to the world, I would love, do you have something that we can share today? that you would just love to see happen or you'd love for yourself or? So I would say I would love to be, <clears throat> to actually show up as a global resilience strategist. All right. Or just individuals out there. Okay. Because it's an individual experience, right? That really matters more. And then you influence the community. All right. I want to be able to be that person, that agent that gives the individual that passion-driven comeback experience right. that they've been longing for so that they can live their dream lives. That's my mission. There it is. There it is. It's always kind of, you know what? Sometimes that question comes up for me and I was like, okay, today it's, today it's for Saskia. So here's my last question that has nothing to do with anything of what we just shared about. So you're on your way to a desert island and you have a suitcase. And in that suitcase, you have room for one album. What album could you not imagine not listening to for the rest of your days? It can't be a, it can't be your playlist. So what band, what song, what album would you take with you to that desert island? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's really an intricate question there. So it's a big question. It's a, it's a big question. Oh, wow. Okay. So I do love um, Yolanda Adams. Okay. I'm a woman of faith. And it, her music is just really does move me, you know, hard. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's really a, a question of the steel because I'm also from a culture of steel pan orchestra. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that <laughs> puts me in a wonderful spirit. <laughs> All right. I love that so much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're going to just forsake, put Yolanda Adams. Yes. I'll put Yolanda. Yes. Very inspiring and, and uh, deep. Yeah. Because on our show, we just, you know, we just believe that music is a powerful vibration and it helps inspire and motivates and gets people through anything. And if you're going to take on a mission, you're going to need some music. You're going to take on a mission. You're going to need some music. Yes. You know? And you need strengthening, strengthening and empowerment and knowing that you can do, you can get through. That's yes. why I chose Yolanda Adams, because a lot of her music is geared towards that. Yes. Whatever you're doing is temporary right now that you're going through you know, set back, but just look at the beautiful life that you have ahead of you and, and your, you know, this design for greatness mm -hmm. and purpose. And that's what I'm about. I'm a very purpose driven individual. I'm on a wonderful path of purpose right now. Wonderful season. Perfect. Well, look, please share. We're going to have it in the show notes because we have audio and video. So please share with us where people can go find more. Um, I know you have classes. I know you have books. I know you have programs. Um, they run continuum. So please tell people where to go and find that information. We will definitely have it in the show notes as well. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for that opportunity. So the resilience, um, boot my website, first of all, is uh, boosttrue.com, B-O-O-S-T-T-H-R-U.com. And there you'll see the resources in the uh, summit uh, workshop, um, the workshop offering that you have a two hour workshop around resilience, mm -hmm. wonderful subject. And um, it's really meant to just help somebody um, really understand what resiliency is, how they can incorporate elements of grace and resilience in different seasonal, you know, phases of their journey, and really how they can have that purpose driven come back and be rewarded for their competencies and for their hard work and become, most importantly, the best version of themselves. So we have all that practical strategies to help you, you know, that you can mm -hmm. develop and you can sustain. And of course, there are other, um, my book that I co-authored, The On Purpose Strategies for Living and Leading, that's also available there on the website. My chapter is Chapter 3, Reclaiming Power. And then, um, of course, the uh, I do have Seasonal Thriving Navigation, e-course that's uh, being launched here in Gajabi, as well as the resilience, a resilience uh, five-step plan on how to overcome and become unstoppable. Well, let's leave it with that powerful world, people. Right? <laughs> so unstoppable. You came to the, not only the most resilient audience today, but you are unstoppable. Let's leave this uh, podcast feeling unstoppable. I want to thank you so much for being our guest today. It was thank such you. a pleasure. You're such a thank beautiful you. soul. I'm so excited um, on our journey in terms of, you know, unfolding this beautiful friendship and biz I always call it bizship and friendship because uh, we're doing both together. Um, and look, people, if you would like to be sitting in that exact same seat, sharing your passion and your purpose and your message, please reach out. This is not difficult. It's devdrummond.com. You can just go onto the website. You can fill out the contact and we'll be in touch or deb at debdrummond.com. And you cannot absolutely forget about what we've got going on. If you want to talk about all of the things that we heard today about stepping out, then you have to come to the step up. <laughs> we added step up yesterday in a meeting, but show up, speak up and stand up. Yes, you incredible 22 summits for women and those that support women. And also the incredible book, 262 women. Um, compiled in a book that is launching International Women's Day 2024. I don't normally give dates, but if you're listening to this after that, you know, just go to the website and get that book. And there's 262 women of gumption sharing all, giving all, telling all. And I'm sure you know of the movement that's happening. And we're probably doing a live book signing in a town or a country close to you. So thank you for that. And if you want to just come fill up, just come fill up on the eighth day of every single month. We so appreciate you. Thank you for being our guest today. And we so appreciate you. You're the most amazing listeners. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you for sharing to all the people that listen to all over the world. We're so appreciative of you. And until we meet again, you guys know what to do. You need to be well and you need to stay groovy. So I'll see you again next week. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs>